so I talked some about uh, the piatics that are in Sage this morning. Um, so I'm going to briefly go over these again for those of you who weren't here. Uh, so Sage supports uh, uh, Sage supports various different kinds of piatic rings. Um, and there are three different precision models that are used. So one is capped relative rings, where elements are stored as a valuation, uh, a unit, and a relative precision. Then there's capped absolute rings, where elements are stored as an approximation together with an absolute precision. And then fixed modulus rings, where individual elements don't store their own precision, but there's a common absolute precision for all elements in the ring. Uh, so you can do. Uh, Um, you can make elements, you can specify the precision of the ring itself, and you can also specify the precision of the, uh, the elements as you create them, either with, uh, by default, if you just pass in a number, it defaults to absolute precision, but you can specify both absolute and relative precision caps. Uh, you can create capped absolute rings, uh, and I would just illustrated the differences between the the two. This one has a precision cap of of uh, uh, absolute precision cap of twenty. This one has a relative precision cap of forty. So you get different kinds of behavior when you cast in uh, objects with different precisions or with different valuations. You can multiply things between different rings together, and the precision of the operations depends on the precision of the elements you're multiplying. Uh, you can create fixed modulus rings, and uh, the various operations on fixed modulus rings can give you garbage in high-level bits if you don't know what you're doing. So if you do some operation in a fixed modulus ring, like dividing by p, which would lose precision, it just ignores that. Uh, you can invert elements and get things with negative valuations. They live inside the, five, the piatic fields. All right, and then I did some timings this morning. I talked about conversion maps. Uh, it turns out that fixed modulus rings are not as fast as we would want them to be. Um, isn't that always the case? So I wanted to also talk a bit about the unramified and totally ramified extensions that exist in Sage currently. Um, so Sage has... Uh, supports both. The easiest way to create unramified rings is to use the zq and the qq command. So qq creates uh, 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 a field and zq creates a, a, the ring of integers inside that field. Um, by default you, ne you need to give it a variable name. Um, so if you just do zq of 125 it will complain that you have to specify a variable name. You can do that uh, either by, uh, that's the precision, so let's do this, it's the type. Um, uh, here, I forget, yeah. <laughs> So the doc string says that it's supposed to be names plural. Uh, so 125 means that it's it's creating the uh, the degree three extension of Z5. Um, whoa! Just have, oh, I went down to the bottom. Um. Yeah, so I mean, there's a there's a common shorthand, which is Z. It's a five cubed for the words. So we used ZQ of 125 to, for that shorthand. And by default, this this picks a polynomial uh, in the same way that that finite that uh, finite fields pick a generating poly, uh, defining polynomial. So. For small extension degrees and small primes, this is using a database of Conway polynomials that are coherent for different degree extensions. 
Um, for larger degree extensions, it, it may be picking the polynomial randomly. It may be trying to do something sparse. It depends a little bit on what, the, what P is. Um, and you can also specify your own polynomial. And, uh, yeah. If you create two D2 of uh, 125 with different polynomials, and you have coercion map between them? Or? No. Uh, and there shouldn't be a coercion map because there's not a unique map uh -huh. between the two. Because right. there will be different powers of, and I mean, you can compose map? with powers of Fermi's, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And conversion map? Uh, the conversion is probably broken, is my guess. Okay. My guess is it will try to take the polynomial and uh, reinterpret it into, with the other defining polynomial. Um, you, can, you can create the morphisms, but I think that the explicit, so uh, I believe. The, the, the polynomial is like deterministically. Yes. For small, primes. for small primes, they're certainly chosen deterministically. For large primes, I don't remember. Um, because once you're out of the data, once you're out of the range in the Conway database, then uh, for p equals two, my guess is it tries to choose a sparse polynomial. Uh, for larger primes, it may use a random method. There's always polynomials. They make an unramified extension. They can always just uh, do like x to the n minus a unit which is not a unit power, right? Well, but how do you choose which unit? Yeah, that's, so, th so that's the only thing it chooses, or it can also just generate a whole bunch of other coefficients. Like, it doesn't need to choose a polynomial of a specific it's, It doesn't, it's not using just x to the n minus the unit, oh, okay. I think. Um, because it does what, it does the same thing that the finite fields are doing. So it's chosen to be co consistent with the finite field implementation. Um, and if you create two unramified extensions, for instance, dp of uh, i to a two and dp of i to a six, um, no, there's there's there is basically no coercion between extension fields or piano fields, um, and and between finite fields, if they do, they uh, you can create you can certainly create the morphisms, and I have a patch posted somewhere on, I don't forget what ticket number it is, but it's not in the current version of Sage. There's a ticket if you want to review it, then. Uh, we can put it in, but, uh, and then that would extend, so you would, before you want, before you do p you would want to get this working for finite fields, and then you could try to have the same functionality exist for unramified extensions. Um, but then after that, there's also a question of, I mean, certainly that there exists, I mean, you want to be able to write down maps between different totally ramified, unramified extensions, and this is all going to boil down to being able to factor, right? So uh, this is waiting on factoring polynomials over piano fields. Um, so you can do arithmetic. Um, uh, I just, you can create elements with smaller orders. I just wanted to point out that exponentiation actually increases the precision in the way that it should. Um, so if you raise something to a uh, I mean, this is a five-adic field. You raise something to a power of five, uh, then it increases the precision. Uh, there's uh, Teichmuller lifts of various elements. You can create totally ramified extensions. So notice that here we have a degree four extension of, uh, of R. R had precision 40. And so this is a, a, a extension where the Precision cap is 160, because the ramification degree was, was 4. And valuations are in terms of are in terms of the, the uniformizer. Uh, though there is, I think, an ord p function, which gives you the other one if you want. Correct. Of ZP or and QP. Then, I mean, you could do it as a right, field right, as well. Right. But so then P is the uniformizer, right? So you've no, no, not anymore. Uh, this is no, totally no, ramified. No, no, I understand. But like when you say so, so it gives you one specific totally ramified. Correct. So you're only able to do this with so an okay. Eisenstein polynomial, yeah, yeah. and so that you have a distinguished uniformizer, yeah, which is mean. the, and the yeah. choice of uniformizer is P, of course, for QP, right? For QP, correct. Yeah, correct. Okay. 
Um, so I would like to be able to specify different uniformizers, but uh -huh. it's not currently possible. Is there, is there currently a way to somehow specify different units, right? That goes back to this thing. What do you mean different units? Uh, well, you know, to specify different uniformizers as good as specifying a unit to specify. Oh, to multiply by. Yes. Uh, the, I mean, this is not, not currently uh -huh. implemented. Um, and you can do arithmetic in, in these totally ramified extensions. Uh, here you have some random element. What was R? Uh, R was Z was the five attic ring with relative precision cap forty. Right. So we. What? Oh, but we subtracted one. Right. So the point is when we. Ah. Right. When we subtract one. So if you do 1 plus w to the fifth power, it's it's still going to have precision 160 because it has a, a, but if I cast in 1 with precision uh, 100, then this has precision 104. So it increased precision. So the point is that uh, Uh, I mean, 1 plus w is just, let's go to the 160th. But you can't get more okay. precision than 160th because it's capped at 160. But if you started with something with lower precision, like this, which only has relative precision 100, and you raise it to the fifth power, it'll increase the precision. Um, and behind the scenes, this is using NTL, and you can get at that underlying representation by asking for the NTL ref of the polynomial. And so this gives a, um, oops. Um, there are two of them. One, this is this is the just the unit, and this is if if you have something which is not a unit, it will try it will uh, scale it. Right, so this multiplied by w to the fifth. Because right. this is something with order five. So internally, this is stored as it has valuation five, and then there's some polynomial representing the unit, which is this divided by w to the fifth. Um, and if you ask for NTL rep abs, it multiplies by w to the fifth and uh, reduces, and this is what you get. David, how does this compare with like Pari? So Pari does all sorts of things with number fields, and this is just sort of like just localizing the number field construction. Is there a reason why NTL is used for this, or can Pari be used to do things that are general extensions? Or I, mean, I just I don't know how the functionality compares. So um, could you make some comments? So I didn't look at Pari that much uh, in terms of uh, I imagine they would use poly like a quotient of a polynomial ring for. Um, for implementing this over over ZP, um, I haven't I haven't looked at at how what kind of speed you would get. I do know that in general, for arithmetic, I think NTL often beats Puri um, for things like polynomial arithmetic. Um, but I'm not don't have that much to say. Um, and Sage suppose yeah. So this is a this is the coefficients of a polynomial uh -huh. over into L. So this is the constant coefficient x x squared and x cubed. And there's this how you get this? How do you get this? Um, What do you mean? What is the other representation? So, this is. So let me perhaps illustrate what's going on here. Uh, so if I do w to the fifth times. Oops, uh, Uh, 
to be So this is what I mean by this is the NTL rep. Right? This is the the unit times the power of W is equal to the, the thing that I got. So I wanted to talk a bit about polynomials and matrices. Um, Sage supports both polynomials and matrices with uh, uh, p-adic coefficients. Um, and it basically tracks, uh, I think currently it's, it's essentially a list of coefficients, where the coefficients are done, uh, uh, the precisions are done separately. Um, sorry, the, the precision is, is held within each coefficient. Um, so there's some there's a, a class for for p-adic polynomials, and if you subtract off so that there's a leading uh, a leading zero, it it still keeps track of the fact that it doesn't know that that's exactly zero. So there could be some uh, some non-zero entry there. And if you add the degree, that will be fine to find one. I think it will tell you zero, and that's a problem. Well, I think it it. <laughs> Yeah, I think th there's there's currently a patch that is not in Sage that that improves the handling of polynomials with leading zeros. What should be the I think the degree should still be zero, but there should be another function which gives you the the the, the first term, which may or may not, which has none, which has precision information. Um, and then I was going to show you something. Ugly. So I can also make polynomials over uh, over extension fields. So I took that that w, and then I just do a little bit of computation with oops, uh, with that, and I get something which is unreadable. So I wanted to show you uh, briefly some things about printing modes. So there are various uh, ways in which you can print p-adic elements differently. So this particular printing mode called digits, which just prints out di p-adic digits. Uh, this shouldn't need to be there. That's a bug that I was working around that I discovered while preparing this this morning. Uh, but you can make it work like this. You can also say that I don't want to see all of the digits. I just want to see only a few so that you can see what the valuations of entries are. So if I create uh, a new polynomial ring over this one, then this is a bit more readable. Right, so it just keeps track of how many zeros there are at the end, so you can read off valuations of coefficients and the first few entries. And then it tells you that there are more numbers going up the other direction. It's, uh, there are various ways in which you can say, I only want to see a certain number of terms. This, it just means the maximum number of terms in a, in a series, it, in kind of the Pi, the pi-adic expansion of that, of that entry. Ramified. ramified. Well, could you explain what, what this representation mean exactly? Because so this means that this entry here yeah. is 3 plus 0 times w plus 0 times w squared plus higher powers of w. Well, this is in a ramified extension. So yeah, I understand. Pi powers okay. of w go left, go from right to left? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Right, so this one says that this is w to the fifth times three plus zero times w to six. <laughs> um, it is a little funny. I agree. Uh, so first of all, it's not actually known exactly. It's it's only known up to. Probably, yeah. It should probably have a fixed number of entries. Um, and it would also be nice if there was some other mode, especially for matrices, where you could say, I, I want this many actual digits, right? So here the number of digits varies depending on the valuation. And you get more if it has trailing zeros. So there are various print modes. I'm not going to go through all of them. But um, they don't really matter very much if you're dealing with just ZP and QP. 
But if you start to work with polynomials and, and matrices, uh, it's kind of nice to be able to see what's going on rather than have this wall of, of powers of W. Yeah, I guess if, if you were here to answer my question, I would, that looks to me like we only know one digit of one. Mm. Well, you can always get the entry and then ask for its precision. Yeah. Right, so... I would be happy to, to get some feedback on, on this kind of stuff and, and change things. Um, I think that I'm the only one who's ever used this, so... <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know. <laughs> so. No, I don't think so. So. Uh, I'm I'm happy to change interfaces. Like. Uh, um. Yeah. So it is all documented. You can look at um. You can look at ZQ. Right and. <laughs> uh, right, so there's another there's another mode called terse where it prints things as polynomials. Um, yeah, so I would I would be happy to get feedback on uh, on on this kind of stuff, whether people find it useful also. Uh, you can create matrices over p-addicts. Uh, in general, in Sage, uh, you give uh, Right, so here's a matrix. Uh, maybe I would like to use a different printing mode. Uh, um, and you can do arithmetic with matrices, square them, etc. Um, and if you look at the type, of M, this is just a generic matrix. So this is thing, it's behind the scenes, it's just stored as a list of p-adic elements. So this is not optimized at all. Um, and uh, Did you ask for inverses and characters to call them? No. Uh, so, I mean, it's going to be okay here because it's just degree two, but uh, in particular, well, I think it may it may do things very naively in order to try to avoid precision loss. I don't remember what the current setting is. So you have, you have two kinds of you have two options here. Um, you can either do something very naively with bad algorithms in ways where you keep the precision, or you can try to use good algorithms and just lose your precision. So I have something to say about that in a second. What's up? Yeah, so there is uh, within the implementation for the common implementation system, or implementation should be used for new Oh, great. Which should be on top of the only one factor of the And that's division free, but that still is going to cause you precision problems. Yes, but it avoids the problem of even if it makes the time of identity, if you use the um, argument, it's not division free, you already run the implementation. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. Uh, and so that's used by default if the if the ring is not exact. Nice. Um, right. So Sage knows that certain rings are uh, Sage knows that that this ring is not exact, and so the elements are stored kind of in some sort of an exact way, and it, it chooses different algorithms at various points depending on whether the ring is exact or not exact. Is this just not considered exact? No, still considered not exact. So that, uh, because it's modeling a non-exact ring. Um,
what I would like to see done differently for for this, uh, and I think a lot of kind of more complicated structures built on top of piatics, is that the I would like to see the the approximation part and the precision part separated out more rigorously, so that rather than storing this behind the scenes as a list of piatic entries, you store it as a, an integral an integral matrix together with some sort of precision data. And then this gives you various benefits. So first of all, you don't have to store the fact that these elements all have precision 20 as a whole bunch of 20s. You can store it as, I want a matrix where it's a flat precision. And every element has precision 20. Um, and that's not done currently for any kind of ring, um, even if it's fixed modulus. Uh, it also, for polynomials, could give you more interesting precision structures like related to Newton polygons of the polynomials or of the kind of the uncertainty in the polynomial. And then you can write algorithms that uh, manipulate the approximation and manipulate the precision separately. So you do your, you compute your determinant of that integer polynomial or maybe the integer mod, mod p to the 50th to prevent coefficient blow up write down that answer, that's an approximation of the correct answer, and now you just need to know how much precision you know it to. And so you can separately determine the precision with various methods depending on what the user asks for. Right? You could try doing that computation three times and see where they differ, right? If the, if the user wants a rough guess as to the precision but doesn't care about provability, or you could use some model for what the precision of the answer should be. So uh, one of the things I would like to see uh, Sage do for power series, polynomials, matrices, is have data structures that, that separate these in a more rigorous way um, so that you can, you can write algorithms to take advantage of that. Um, so I guess we're kind of entering the second, the second half of my talk. So I've told you uh, what Sage can do currently um, related to piatics. Are there any questions about kind of whether or not Sage can do something right now. Uh, earlier, Julie asked about variable p. Uh, it's not possible at the moment. Uh, what about uh, multivariable power series? It can do multivariable power series. Nothing special. Nothing special. It's just a generic implementation of, uh, of multivariable power series, and you can plug in, plug in piatic so coefficients. No, there's, there are lots of things that you can do, especially in the kind of power series over piatic entries, over piatic, uh, over piatics or power series or power series where you try to kind of treat which monomials you want to allow, where you think about P as being another, power of P as another kind of monomial that Sage doesn't have any of that. Um, but John, your question is already, I mean, your question is about a generic ring, right? I mean, I you want sort of multivariate yeah. polynomials over a generic ring with some sort of, but not the sort of not all not, possible, not all, but not with all possible monomials, but sort yeah. of a corner monomial. It would be nice if it could take advantage of the precision. Like I guess right now, it will just be multiplying each of the elements individually. Um, it's a, I guess that's to check the precision each for each coefficient to multiply it to that one. If you have a huge series, sure. you can spend a lot of time checking it on each of the components. Yeah. Um. And I think this is, again, something where you really want a better precision structure, right? So you want to think about this as an inter if Say you have ZP of X, Y, Z, right? Uh, power series in X, Y, and Z. You, you want to approximate that as something with Z with integral coefficients and just a polynomial Z of X, Y, Z. And then say that we only know this poly we kind of We've thrown away terms outside of this region. And what that region should be kind of should depend on what your precision structure looks like. And that precision structure may be some sort of box. It may be some diagonal slice of some kind. It may, I mean, who knows? The users should be able to specify what kind of precision data they want rather than just having one. Uh, so that's what makes it a little more complicated for them, I guess. It makes it less sure. As the precision goes up, you have terms that will be zero that you will want to yeah, and I think you definitely want to be able to tie in piatic coefficients so that you can have the 
kind of the power of p enter into, I mean, you have this ideal generated by some power of p, right? It's an ideal in z, zp of x, y, z, not just uh, uh, z of x, y, z. Any more questions about what Sage can do now? You said that there was a way to do it entirely differently without precision, and then that died somehow. But oh, right. About that. Um, so at the, at the big Sage days two, one of the models we came up with for piatics was a lazy model, where uh, a piatic number, one way to think about it is it's uh, a way of producing piatic digits. So mm -hmm. uh, in the five addicts, three quarters is a way of producing five, five addict digits. If I ask for the 21st digit, you can give me the 21st digit. If I ask for the 730th digit, you can give me the 730th digit. And you can do arithmetic with these kind of lazily. So you add them together, and it knows that if I want this digit, then I get this digit from this one, and this digit from this one, and then I give that digit. Um, and this was implemented in some version of Sage. Uh, I don't remember which. And it was pretty buggy, no tests. And at some point, uh, I decided that it should stop being supported and instead focus on the, the ones that people actually use for kind of computations. Um, it would be great to have it back in Sage at some point, but, and I, yeah. Asking questions, sorry. Can you, okay. do, can you tell us about an example of a computation with the addicts that's interesting that Sage can do now? Sure, that's a, that's a, a great question. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't meant in any unfair way. I was just curious because you said people use it for computation. I want to see what kind. Um, so, one, one kind of computation that, uh, that uh, people can do is there's. Um, it's piatic heights and piatic L series for elliptic curves. Um, oh. oh, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at the documentation for piatic height. Um, so this is the cyclotomic piatic height. Um, you take some curve and you ask for uh, uh, a prime a precision, and then it gives you a Q-rational point in the curve. Uh, it gives you a function which computes heights of, of points. Right, so uh, let's say uh, f equals piatic height of uh, 5. Uh, I guess the rest are fine. Oops. Do that. Um, and then Hmm? The heights of global points. Oh. So this is this is the curve over Q. These are heights of Q rational points. But they are, they are, there's a there's a piat, there's a notion of the piatic height, piatic canonical height, which is distinct from the usual Neron Tate Archimedean canonical height. Okay, but what is that five that we take? Prime five. Is that this is this yeah, height this is, is going to take value of five attic numbers? And so for different primes p, you get different height functions. The point is, it, it computes the regulator term that appears in the piatic version of BSD. Mm -hmm. the, 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 it shows up in the special value of the piatic L function. In this case, P is 5. Um, and you say that you can compute piatic L series with that at this point. Uh, yeah. So, so there's piatic L series associated to this elliptic curve. Um, and it computes uh, approximations to the, p the actual piatic L series. Hmm? And then see what the answer roughly looks like? Like what kind of output you get? And you tend to get a feel for so, what you So you mean how it's implemented? Or? No, kind of like, or no. what the answer looks like. So, you ask so here, here's the example, right? Uh -huh. oh, okay. The answer is just the piatic number. So, I mean. You can evaluate it, right? This is this is the L series P, and you're evaluating it as zero, and you get a piatic number. Right? Oh, so it somehow knows how to evaluate it again. Yeah. 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 Well, let's uh, let's plug in. I think so. I haven't actually looked at this code, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> modulus symbol for more details, right? Yeah. Um, this is there is some there's also some code in Sage that uses um, 
that does some point counting with uh, on hyperelliptic curves with p-adic uh, cohomology, I think. Um, so, uh, let's see. But, 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 you know, if I give you, I don't know, if you could do this question, if I give you a bunch of like, equations defining who knows what kind of variety, not a curve, would it be mm -hmm. like this, you think? I don't think so. Totally it's a generic variety? No. I mean, if this is what... I mean, that's generally that's a very hard question. I mean, right. you're getting yeah. P equals NP in this question, so... Uh -huh. ah, okay. So, it's, it's very hard. So, for a totally generic one, no. Um, there is code in Sage to do various, uh, various computations with point counting, and then I think other people have code built on top of Sage that's not in the Sage library itself to do some kinds of stuff like this. Um, uh, there, I think, I, I would say those are you know, the, the two biggest examples I can think of are computing with piatic L series and kind of piatic modular forms, uh, and then computing kind of point counting and, um, and stuff for varieties. And yeah, it's it's a good question. Kind of, what are the eventual, what are the uses of this? We're trying to put these two. Trying to get into it. Yeah, well, there are some people in this room like who have deployed it. some of these uses. So. Yeah. Um, are there other questions about what Sage can do now, or what's p adequately, what's in Sage? All right. Um, then I'm going to transition and start talking about uh, what I would like to see Sage be able to do. Um, and this kind of, I'll go through the various ideas that, that I've had uh, for improvements, and then um, we'll switch and start the co coding sprint organization, and I'll ask other people to contribute ideas that they want to work on this week. So somewhere on here projects page, and linked to the projects page, I have this. So this is a wiki page I made uh, a year and a bit ago um, about a bunch of, of projects to, to improve the state of, of uh, p addicts and Sage. So I've already glanced, I've already mentioned some of them briefly, uh, and this is just an overview. Each one of these is a link to kind of something with hopefully more details. Uh, so I would like to be able to work with general extension rings, right? So we currently, we can just deal with unramified and totally ramified extensions defined by an Eisenstein polynomial. I want to be able to take QP, give it any polynomial, and create an extension. Take that extension, give another polynomial, create a tower of extensions, right? So uh, that's, that's one goal. Uh, another goal that I have is to do this separation of precision data from approximation data for polynomials and for matrices. Uh, so I have some code which does this. Um, it has been in progress for a long time. Uh, so I'd like to try to clean that up and get it into Sage. Uh, currently, there's not really good Hensel lifting in Sage at all. So uh, along with this improvements to polynomials, you really need to be able to lift roots and need to be able to lift factorizations of polynomials. Uh, more generally, um, uh, I mean, down below I have some some projects about factorizations more generally. Uh, is stuff like that not already included in the factorization algorithms of the Cambridge theories? Is it is, but it's not as it's not very accessible. I mean I looked at Paris a little bit, but uh, I mean and Sebastian uh, will hopefully be able to help us here. Um, it, do you know if there's a way to get from Paris implementation of piatic factoring to if I give you a polynomial, how do I get out the unram kind of a 
how do I split it into an unramified extension and a, and a totally ram and a totally ramified extension? Yeah. Yeah, so I think we would like to have a native implementation of factoring in Sage that works for different num for different piatic fields, not just for ZP and QP. And then once that is done, that will as as output kind of when you're trying to factor a polynomial, kind of along one of the certification that it's irreducible, for example, will generally be will give you this information of of a splitting of that polynomial into an unramified part and a totally ramified part. Um, so it's not accessible from Paris, and the pre implementation is restricted. So we'd like to have our own. Um, linear algebra. Uh, there are a lot of interesting questions about what you mean by precisions of. I mean, if I have some matrix over the piatics and I ask for the kernel of that matrix or the image of that matrix and it's not full rank, I mean, or ask them for the rank of that matrix, right? What should the right answer be? Right? I give you a, a matrix over QP. It's square. You have no idea, right? I mean, it, you, you can sometimes, you can know that it is full rank, but if it looks like it's less than full rank, you can never know for sure if you're working at a finite precision. Because you've truncated it, and there could just be, I mean, you can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way, like, yeah, so. In this case, part of the problem is giving some sort of definition of what a reasonable, what a reasonable answer should be. Yeah. So I've talked to Xavier about this uh, last year, and we have some thoughts, but um, it's not in... It's not in Sage, it's not implemented anywhere as far as I know. I think, uh, I know that various people who've tried to use magma for piatic computations have gotten frustrated with, with uh, the way they deal with, with linear algebra over, over local fields. And so... It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Is there, a, is there an analog of the SVE for a piatic thing that will allow you to pick out critical values that are close enough to zero that that would give you a well-defined notion of numerical rank, because that's what they do over R. I suppose the analog of SVD is factoring, um, it's something like factoring the thing in like an invertible matrix over ZP times something in some sort of normal form. It's like yeah. a, it's almost like doing a Smith normal form computation. Um, yeah, but there's, there's lots of questions about stability and uh, and good algorithms to use, and I'd like to to think about to think about linear algebra over, over local fields and what's what the right definitions are, what the right ways to implement various things are. Um, uh, and how to and just as for polynomials, being able to separate the precision um, structures for for matrices and vectors. Um, I already mentioned this briefly, factoring polynomials over local fields, implement that. And I know that uh, Sebastian and his student, Brian, have been thinking about this. Uh, I don't know what the status of that is, but I'd like to, I mean, he, Sebastian is giving a talk tomorrow about factoring, so hopefully we'll be able to hear something about that then. Um, completions, so currently there's no relationship between Local fields in Sage and number fields. If I have a number field, I can't complete it. So. Yep. Yes, you need to be able to you need to be able to factor. So it, a lot of this comes down to being able to factor. There's a reason this list comes in a certain. Well, <laughs> I, I I don't know that these are actually ordered. Some a lot of them. That one, that one certainly is there. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, this. I tried to list prerequisites for a lot of these. So, uh, 
you can do some things with completions without without some of these things. Um, if, for example, the completion uh, at a prime is just QP or ZP itself, you shouldn't be able to construct the map, right? Without being able, to, I mean, if it's unramified. split at that prime, or if, or if it's unramified, I mean, we, we can write down the maps and like, this is all doable without the full factoring for some of it, right? I mean, for a general number field, you need to be able to factor, but sometimes it, you don't and, uh, it, it would be very nice to be able to work with these and to be able to have coercion maps which go in the appropriate direction so that you can do arithmetic and you can kind of take number field elements and get them into the appropriate local field and then not have to worry about kind of explicitly with morphisms. You had a question, sir? Yeah, so I mean, it, you have a number field defined by some, like, some polynomial over Q, for example. And you need to know how that factors over, over, periodically, right? In order to determine what the the primes are and what the what the maps are. Yeah, I guess you could handle the unramified case and just return not implemented error. For example, yeah, um, and that would still be it would still be nice, and it would also still kind of set up the infrastructure so that once you got factoring working, you just went and plugged that in. Um, Template. So, uh, right now, the I feel like the way piatics are written in Sage is not very sustainable in terms of adding a lot of features. Um, and the reason for that is that there are these three different kinds of precision models, right? And then there are these different kinds of backends. You maybe, right now, things are implemented using NTL's ZZPX, but tomorrow, Sebastian's going to talk about Flint's piatics. We might like to have some piatics in Sage implemented using Flint. Or Piatics and Sage implemented using Pari, right? Maybe we can do something with Pari as a backend, right? And if you need to re-implement all of this stuff with dealing with precision, keeping track of the, uh, the, the cap relative and all of the logic for figuring out how to, how to what the precision of the expon exponentiation should be and kind of exact zeros and all of this infrastructure, then you have 3,000 line files for every single one of every single one of these times you want to make it uh, plug in a new backend. So Sage has already had to deal with this to some extent in with uh, polynomials. And uh, I think Martin Albrecht came up with a solution which I think would work very well for Piatics as well, uh, which he calls templates. I mean it's kind of based on loosely on the idea of templates from C, but uh, being able to have uh, an implementation that you can then just plug in a backend so that you write a linkage file uh, against Flint or against Puri or whatever that provides certain functions in Cython, right? The ability to add two of your, your backend units together, the ability to multiply them, the ability to shift left and right, right? To be able to multiply by a uniformizer, divide by a uniformizer. And then you implement that linkage file, and then there's just a little bit of boilerplate code that you need to inherit from something. Uh, and the, the logic about dealing with all the precision tracking is done once, and then everything else is able to take advantage of that. So uh, yesterday, I Friday and yesterday, I mostly wrote a version of ZP with capital relative precision using this template file. It's not quite done, but... I'd like to, to have that and then have it be much simpler to plug in a back end where we start using Flint, start using whatever um, to, do the, to do the approximations. Um, yeah. What I told you this morning, so if you want to now have create a function for your thing, you have this template, you just change the domain, no? Like, yeah. Mean, yeah, so now you just have a different back end. So now instead of, uh, I mean, it's still a cap relative element. We're still storing things as kind of a, a long a C long which stores your valuation, a C long which stores your relative precision, and then a unit. Right? And that unit is now a polynomial in Flint over right, or a rational function implemented using this whatever, whatever it is. You just need to write the following API, implement those those functions, and now you have kind of yeah. localizations of piatic local lo, localizations of function fields. Yeah. So 
this I, I would like to see this happen. Um, if P to the per, if P to the precision cap fits in a long, you should be able to do things much faster. Currently, Sage always uses MPIR or GMP. Um, so if you're working with small precisions and small primes, again, if you have templates, then you just write some easy back end which implements things with, uh, with C longs, and it should be pretty easy to get better performance for, for small primes and precision cases. Um, cyclotomic extensions. Uh, Right now, Sage number fields, there's a special class for cyclotomic extensions. Uh, and it would be nice to have a piatic analog that dealt with that better because, I mean, they come up a lot in number theory and we'd like to, to be able to handle them well. Uh, various people have mentioned power series over, over uh, piatics and power series over exact rings. The, the code base are... are fairly different at the moment, um, and it would be nice to unify them a little bit. Uh, and to be able to, to deal with more int interesting precision questions. Uh, what kind of precision structures you want to, to allow for, for power series. Um, there, this is not exactly, this is related to to an implementation question which came up, but there's a specialized class in for matrices over Z mod n for n less than 46, 341, which is something where like the square is less than it, it fits inside an int, I think. It's like n less than. And yeah, I don't know exactly where that, that cutoff came from, but uh, once you get above that cutoff, things slow down a lot. Um, so. This is probably not, it's not exactly uh, tied very tightly to piatics, but it was a, something which went on this list. Uh, towers of extensions, so relative extensions of piatic fields. So once we have factoring, then, uh, and this templated backends, then you can just plug in different backends, uh, kind of, Recursive backends, so a backend which is consists of a polynomial over a piatic field. Um, there are some databases of piatic fields uh, with a lot of cool information about Galois groups, and uh, it would be nice to add an interface to, to Sage so that you could access those. Um, VIT vectors for general rings. Um, we have Lewis here somewhere who. Uh, has thought about this some. He's going to be giving a talk later this week. Um, I, for piatic fields themselves, uh, I think that vid vectors are probably not the way to go, but you may prove me wrong. Uh, be great to be proven wrong. Uh, but for other characteristic P infinite rings and fields, it would be nice to be able to support vid vectors. Um, being able to compute Galois groups, I mean, right now there's Pre is able to do it for number fields, but Pre doesn't really have a lot of functionality for supporting local fields more fundamentally. So being able to take extensions of local fields and compute with their Galois groups, apply those elements of those Galois groups to local fields. Um, intersections and subfields and compositums of piatic extensions. Towers of extensions, including kind of lazy infinite towers of, of extensions that come up in um, like piatic Hodge theory. Uh, and then I had some smaller projects down here for people who uh, don't want to try to bite off fact, implementing factoring inside Sage. Uh, um, so some of these might be a bit more accessible. So speeding up inversion using Hintzel lifting. So right now, the code for doing inversion is is not the best choice. So you can get some optimizations for doing, doing things there. Uh, um, create an op right now, if, if you uh, go to, if you created this, this ZQ here, here we go. 
Um, right, if you look at this defining polynomial, it just naively lifted those, those uh, roots. You might rather lift them to Teichmuller representatives instead of just the naive lifts of the defining polynomial. And there's some, apparently some cases where that's better. So I don't know, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't want it to be the default, but you might want it to be an option. Uh, exponential map, exponentials and logarithms are defined for, for base, for ZP and QP, but they're broken for, for extensions, and so they're just raised not, not implemented error. There's a partial implementation, but I mean, it's not that hard, it just needs to be done. So if somebody wants to implement those, uh, square roots and nth roots uh, for better implementations for ZP, QP, and their extensions. There are various special functions, piatic gamma functions, arden hasse exponential maps. Um, uh, one of the things that it would be nice to have is the ability to tell if two extensions are isomorphic for totally ramified extensions. So this is just Krasner's lemma. So just going and remembering exactly what the what the math says and implementing it. Uh, that might be related to Henschel. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Sebastian is talking about uh, about the the new Flint, the Piatic Library in Flint. Tomorrow, um, so it would be great to be able to imp to interface with that. Uh, this requires being being able to use Flint two from Sage, which has some technical difficulties at the moment. Um, and so I essentially, this could this could uh, sort of eventually replace the use of NTL. I would like to get rid of NTL uh, for the following reason: NTL has a, a global um, context and every time you do computations you have to reset the global context and if you don't do that correctly it's seg faults. Um, so uh, it's a it's kind of a pain to work with externally. Um, so the, the implementation in Flint has as an argument to all of the the operations, what piatic context you want to work with. Um, so I'll let Sebastian talk about that tomorrow. But uh, I would certainly like to move away from from NTL, and I think in particular the the template that I that I was working on yesterday. I don't. You have to do things in a very specific order for NTL, um, and it's annoying to have to deal with. So I would like to avoid that. So, are there any questions? I think this was a this was about where I wanted to get to for my talk. Um, so we're going to move on and talk about coding sprint in a bit. But uh, so this template that you're talking about, at the end of the day, it will take the coefficient and send it to NTL, yeah? No, not to NTL, but some backend, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you like? Yeah. So let me. Uh, so the, the, the place that the most like the computation happens is not known to the template. Right. Yeah. So this is a this is the implementation of a capital letter element. Let me just show you what what uh, addition looks like. Right. So you you define addition, and then there's this function c add, and you see type bef you this is a pxi file. So just some technical subtleties. This is included inside uh, another Cython file. And before this is included, you see typedef various things, and you also include the, the, the linkage file, which, in, which defines this C function, C add. And it's some, C, it's some inline function, which different linkage files will define differently. For a basic piatic, this would just be mpz add the two MPZTs, right? And then the unit here would have type MPZT, and that unit would have type MPZT. But for a different linkage file, it would define, it would define the, the 
um, the unit differently, and so and they would define this function differently, so everything would happen uh, with a different backend. So you could have used like the same cell to do some treatment. Yeah, the yeah. There's, I mean, this could be this th these types here could be polynomials over a piadics in Sage, right? It could be just entirely within Sage, and then recursively you'd get down to NTL eventually. Other questions? In, uh, in David Harvey's uh, analytic implementation of point counting on the basis of so what, does he use the piatics? So I think so. Does he use something separate by looking at really which range of numbers possible to avoid? I'm just wondering as a model for something. Uh, I don't remember. Um, I think I mean I know that there are various points that he uses Sage Piatics. I don't I don't particularly I don't remember whether for the actual point counting algorithm. My guess is. Knowing him, he would have written something, him, something himself. But yeah. This is. I think. Um, yeah, I mean that's what this file is, right? Um. I mean, there's also some, some code in Sage for Coleman and O'Girls that Jen has written um, that uses that uses Piatics in Sage. Yeah, so definitely at, at, at least the superficial levels it can be written. I mean, I guess Jen wrote most of the, like... Yeah, it might be at some point you might need to get some stuff to the calculation. Yeah, I mean, it's Any other questions? Okay, um, then let's uh, take a five minute break and then we'll start organizing for the coding sprint. So, last chance to think about projects that you want to see everyone else help you with. I was. I should turn that up.